Hey guys, so today I am back in a house that we are building. I uh, just did a video on the plumbing phase, the first plumbing phase of it. Today I'm going to talk about the second phase of the mechanicals, which are the HVAC. So the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. So the mechanicals phase would be when the house is framed, has the roof put on it, we can come in with the various what we call mechanical contractors. So your plumbers, your HVAC company, and your electricians come in last. And we do, do it in that order for a reason. We want the plumbing to be in place, the drains to be all built up so that when the HVAC company comes in and has to run condensation lines, they can see where they need to tie into the drains. So what I'm gonna do is walk through this house and just kind of, if you are building a house, help you understand what is happening with what is the first phase of HVAC. There's just two phases of HVAC installation. The rough end stage, which is what we're at here. So this is when everything's being run before all the walls are up and everything. Most everything is put in with the exception of the outside compressor units, which are those fan units that go outside. Otherwise, most everything else has been put in. They don't put the grills in because you wouldn't get those until you have sheetrock on, on the ceiling and everything. But other than that, all the ductings run and all that. So what I'm gonna do is walk through the house and show you the processes, what goes in at this stage. Talk a little bit about this house and what we did with the fact that it has two systems plus one of them is what we call a zoned system. So stay tuned, I'm gonna walk through all the HVAC. Okay, so I'm upstairs and I'm questioning my life choices right now because the air temperature outside is 98. Wasn't too bad downstairs, but when I got up here, it's probably 108. So I'm gonna try to be fairly efficient with this video and talk to you about the major things that are put in during the rough in of the HVAC. So behind me, you can see we've got two air handlers. So what's happened, this was all going to be one big attic. I talked about this in a different video, but the homeowner wanted to finish a lot of it out. So we ended up with a big game room space. We kind of did a loft over there. It's gonna have a bathroom, but we still had a lot of attic space behind me here. So we're just gonna have an attic access door here and they'll just walk through into their attic. So it's all floored through here. And what I'm gonna do is walk into what will be the HVAC space. So you can see all around me, ducting. This is an air handler unit right here. So an air handler unit is just simply the box that we hang in the attics that contain the fan that pulls air in, what we call return air, as well as the furnace, whether that's gas. I think on this house it is gas or is not gas. <laughs> I should have known that before I started shooting the video. Um, we have not run gas lines yet, so I, I do think these are gas units, and so they will come in with the gas lines. I was looking for a gas line, it's not there yet. Um, but the furnace is in here, as is the evaporative coil, which is the coil that gets cold and air blows across it when you're air conditioning, when you're in air conditioning mode. Um, so these do the heating, they also do the cooling. So what the HVAC company does is they come in, they set the air handler units in the attic. This house has two. So the way this house, and I'll go into this, something that we did in this house in just a minute, but this house is a good size one story and it was going to use two units downstairs. So it's what we would call a zoned system because we'd have one unit with a thermostat running one section of the house. Basically we're splitting the house up. The other unit has a thermostat over on the other side and all the ducts for that unit go over there. So somebody on one side of the house, uh, you know, mainly a primary bedroom, you can, hey, I like to sleep with it at 65. You can do that while not affecting the other side of the house. So that's the way this was set up, but we had a caveat with when they wanted to finish out this upstairs room. So they come in, they set the air handler units. They also set all the ducting. So what we've got here, this, is our plenum. This is the supply air that comes into the house. So all an air conditioner is doing is really recirculating house air. So there are those big, what we call return air uh, vents or grills that will be in the ceiling. They used to get actual filters in them back in the day. We don't do that anymore. All the filters are at the units themselves. Um, so they're just a big grill that is pulling in the air. You can have multiple return air vents and they all just merge and end up at this part of the air handler. So all the return air is coming in here, or all the air I should say is being pulled in here. It's being run through the air handler and let's say we're in air conditioning mode. 
There's an evaporative coil in here. I did another video on all this, so I'm not going to go deep on it. But the air is cooled, and then boom, it comes out the supply end. All these ducts that we see coming out of here are running to different parts of the house, and sometimes they are branching down. They may come out pretty large and then go to smaller size ducts as they go to certain rooms. So if you think about, you know, you've got a small 10 by 10 room, it doesn't need as much air dumped into it as maybe a big room does. It will use a bigger duct. And so that is all done at this phase. The other thing that is done with these units is, and I'm looking for it right now, um, well, they're right below me, the uh, copper lines for the refrigerant. So I must be getting so hot, I can't get my words out. Um, each air handler will have a copper line that will run to outside, to wherever the outside compressor units are gonna be. So you'll see that copper stubbed outside of the sheathing and this house is going to get brick so that'll be going through the brick when all is said and done they come back at the end and set those units but that's what the copper line's for it runs refrigerant back and forth down to the outside compressor up to the coil up here and so it's just these black lines are copper they just have insulated pipe on them and there looks like both running to that side of the house so we're going to have our air conditioning units outside on that side of the house so they put those in. They also will run, let me see if I can get this on video behind me here. This is a wire for a thermostat. So each air handler is going to have its own thermostat. This wire has been run to wherever it needs to be in the house. And the HVAC companies will lay out best locations for thermostats. I've had people come in and say, I don't want that thermostat there where I can see it. And that's one of those form over function things um, because functionally they want to put it in a spot that is best um, determining where the air temperature needs to be to then you know, provide the type of conditioning you need for the house. You could go and put a thermostat in a room that always stays dark and cold and it's running a different temperature than parts of the house. So you can have some issues with what you're setting it at and what the other parts of the house are at. So. Uh, they each have a thermostat wire going to wherever the thermostat's going to be. Uh, we've got some venting and things like that going on here. But basically, that's it during the HVAC rough-in stage. They come in, they set air handlers. You'll see here, air handlers are actually hung from the rafters. Um, so they just hang in midair. All the ducting goes to all the rooms. All that ducting is run. There are the metal, what we call the supply um, boots down there that the, the grills will go on after the sheet rocks up. But right now they're just open. So that's it. That's about all that's being done with an HVAC rough in. One thing I like is when we can put two units up here like this. So I'm going to, here's our one air handler unit I've been pointing at, but I'll spin right around. And behind me is the other one. So let me turn the camera around and kind of show you how this space works out. So it's kind of like a little mechanical room up here. And you just come up and to change air filters, these snap open, boom, four inch air filter right there. So the other thing you'll see is this unit has an actual supply duct in it. That's because this house is going to be a foam encapsulated house, meaning as I've talked about this in other videos, the, the spray foam is in the walls and underneath the roof line. So the attic itself is actually insulated. We put a little bit of conditioned air into the attic to help condition it further as well as control humidity. Because that's one thing that an air conditioner does is it controls humidity. So that's your HVAC. And I want to show you something as I'm walking over here. Here is a return air right here for this room. So as you can see, we've got a big vent that'll have a grill in it. So that's on the wall. Uh, downstairs, they're going to be on the ceiling. Um, big old uh, duct that runs back to the return air of the air handler itself. And that's it. We've got this kind of a chase area here. You see a lot of ducting running through to get to other parts of the house. That can get tricky when second floors get finished out. Even some two stories I've built, we've had to create chases to get ducts through. The architects may design a house for a certain, you know, design, a certain way to live in it, 
but they haven't figured out how the ducting is going to get through. And so you've got to come in and kind of figure some of that out. To look behind me here, you see a lot more duct that's running to the other part of the house. We also see what we call supply air vents. So these are the vents blowing, you know, cold air out uh, when we're on air conditioning or warm air out when we're on heat. There's two of these on the wall that are getting this room up here. So that's the HVAC rough in process. I will talk a little bit, I'll go back downstairs where it's not 110 degrees and talk a little bit about another interesting little thing that was done here, which was a third zone. A third zone for up here. So we've got our own thermostat for up here, but we're running it off one of the units. We don't have three units. So whenever I am doing what I will call a true two-story, by true two-story, I mean we've got a second floor that is living space in regards to there's bedrooms, there's bathrooms. I recommend doing a separate unit for that uh, just because it makes more sense. If a downstairs unit dies or fails, you've got your upstairs unit running, things like that. In this house, we had the situation where all this up here was just going to be storage space. And then as we framed the home, the homeowner said, I want to turn that into living space, conditioned living space. So that now means we needed to have air conditioning and heat up here, but it's adding a lot of space. This is a, a good 700 plus square feet. The good thing was the sizing. So you hear the term sometimes with HVAC tonnage. Generally, residential units are one to five ton units. That's a sizing thing. So the five ton unit, as the name implies, is the biggest and can handle the most square footage. A one ton is small. When we get into a house like this, we may have a total of something like, let's say five tons, but we've run a two ton and a three ton unit. We are zoned downstairs and we've got more than enough capacity to just upsize one of those units share it with one of the zones downstairs, but also have it zoned for up here. Now I'm gonna walk downstairs and explain how that zoning works. Okay, I am back downstairs where I can get a little bit of airflow. Uh, may have a little sweat on my face, but that's okay. At least there's airflow down here. Ah, there we go, right there with the big sliding doors, both of them wide open behind me. So I was just talking about the zoning for the upstairs. So again, kind of an afterthought, hey, let's finish that out up there. Also, again, if it were a true two-story, bedrooms, bathrooms, all that, I would say go with a third unit. But as you can imagine, a third unit is more expensive. And in the end, that's going to be a game room. It's not a priority living space. And we have plenty of sizing left over. You know, we can upsize one of these units that we're using downstairs and then share upstairs. How does that work? How does zoning work? One of the easiest ways to think about what a zone system is, is to think about you have got one hose spigot on the back of your house, but you need to run two hoses. You want one to go to a sprinkler in the yard and one to go to a sprinkler in the flower bed. So what do you do? You run down to the Home Depot, you buy one of those splitters that just, you screw onto your hose spigot and then it's got two little hose spigots coming off of that. And you screw on both hoses, you put your sprinkler out in the yard, you put your other thing in the flower bed, you turn on your hose spigot full blast, and then remember those little splitters have little valves on them too. So you can modulate how much water goes into each hose. So, hey, the sprinkler in your yard, you want to get full blast, you turn that wide open. But the other one's in this little flower bed that's kind of surrounded by concrete. So you turn that valve back. So you're just sending maybe a quarter percent open of water to that sprinkler. Very similar situation with how HVAC systems are zoned. So what we do is coming off the supply of one of those air handler units, it goes into a damper system, a zoned damper. Basically, just like that idea, that hose splitter, it is something that goes in, one line goes in with all the air, it splits it off to two different zones of the house. In this case, one will be on one side of the house and one will go up there and it is just splitting the air. Now, way more technical than my analogy of the little hose spigot thing because there's a thermostat up there that's telling the damper how much air to send to it. Same with downstairs. We are also using what we call variable speed systems that can run slower or faster depending on the load required or the load that it, it needs to meet. 
And so, again, the example I used is what's happening, but it's a little more high tech. So let's say the people on this side of the house want to keep it at 70 degrees. And let's say it's 95 degrees outside. So we're already very hot outside. The house is under a lot of load. The system has to run full blast. And the damper may be wide open. It may be putting as much air into that side of the house as possible because that thermostat is saying, hey, we want to be 70 degrees down here and it's 95 degrees outside. But up there, the person may say, hey, I'm cold natured, I'm watching TV, I wanna put it at 78 up here. I don't need it that cold. Well, the system is running because it's trying to put all the air it can in this side, but what's happening is the damper, the thermostat is telling the damper, we don't need as much air up in that zone. The damper starts to close off, just like I was talking about changing that little valve on the, uh, the hose spigot and limiting the amount of cold air that is dumped into the upstairs room or vice versa. So that's all a damper system's doing. Now they're pretty complex because they're talking to the damper and a damper is just a valve that's basically opening up and letting airflow go through. The thermostat's talking to the damper, but it's also talking to our HVAC system. So it's letting it know as a variable speed unit, does it need to run slow? Does it need to run medium, run fast? That's all it is. So those are a little more economical. You haven't put a whole third system in for that upstairs room. You've spent a little more upsizing it and doing the zone damper system, but it ends up covering all that up there without spending a fortune. So that's the primary reason to do the zone systems. We will also do them downstairs. So let's say you're building a smaller home. It's a 2,500 foot house or 3,000 square foot living. All it needs is one unit to run the whole house. It's a one story. But we still want to say, well, we want to zone for our primary bedroom side and some of that stuff over there because, again, we like to sleep with it on 67. But meanwhile, the kids are on that side or maybe nobody else is in the house. And you say, I don't need to be cooling the whole house at 67 at night when I go to bed. So you set the other thermostat on you know, 75. That allows you with one unit to cool down your bedroom as cold as you want while not cooling down the rest of the house. So that's another place where the damper systems can make sense. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically what's going on in this house. I thought that would be interesting for, for people to, if they don't know about damper systems, usually we think of just each system as its own zone. But if you want, you can take a single system and have separate zones of your house with separate thermostats. So that is the HVAC rough in. Oh, you know what I didn't talk about because I see them hanging right here and I will show it behind me. Let's see if I can do this the ventilation part of HVAC. So if you can see that there is a um, duct hanging right there, that is for a vent fan. Let me turn the camera around real quick. You see that right there? That is for a vent fan and that is a bathroom. So what's gonna happen is we'll come back, the electricians will put the vent fan in and that'll be vented out. So all bathrooms get vent fans. These days, laundry rooms get vent fans. We even have them running the vent for what will be our vent hood. Um, this one's gonna get one out on the patio that I don't think they put in, so we'll have them come back to do that because there is going to be, it's not on the floor plan, but there's gonna be an outdoor kitchen and he wants a vent hood out there. So, okay, I think that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.